And usually I like high contrast photos, but sometimes I don't, especially in harsh light. <laughs> I think that this is an excellent lens. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emmett and uh, professionally I'm a software developer, but my spare time I love landscape photography and making related videos here on YouTube. In today's video, I wanted to show you a couple of ways that you can get nice soft looking photos of um, anything that you're photographing outside in harsh light. I'm particularly going to look at uh, little plants uh, with the flower photos that I took last week. And um, there's really, there's two ways that you can achieve this. One um, is through an editing technique that I will show you later on. And then two, really the best way is to diffuse your light. Now that can be achieved by uh, kind of holding something between the subject and the sun that filters the light a little bit or even just by using your own shadow uh, like I did in some of my photos last week. So I did just want to give you a little bit of an example of this, this first method um, which is really the best way to do this um, and that is of course diffusing the light and so I thought I would take a look at some photos that I took um, a little bit earlier on, which was uh, some photos of this plant here, which I took in the afternoon in very harsh light. And um, so you can see in this first photo, there's very dramatic shadows here, very dramatic highlights. And so it's just not really that pleasing to look at. Uh, in the second photo that I took, I uh, used my shadow uh, to shade the plant a little bit and by doing that it really evens out the light a lot more. Now th because my shadow wasn't covering a terribly big area, the uh, background is still really bright and it's just not quite as pleasing as it could be if I diffuse the light uh, through something as you'll see in a second. But that works pretty well, especially on a nice sunny day. And then the third photo, which I really like the best, um, one of my friends held out a white uh, scarf over uh, where the sun was shining through. And so the, the sun was shining through that white cloth. And with this, you do get a very nice, even photograph. Uh, the leaves look really good. The trunk of the tree isn't too bright. Um, and I actually did turn the exposure down a little bit for that one as well uh, because the sun was a little brighter but on the previous one you can see the leaves are still a little bit darker even though these highlights are really bright and on this one they're a nice color there um, and so we've got a really nice even look throughout the photo. So that's the best way to go if you can is to diffuse your light. Sometimes though that just isn't possible. On last week's photo shoot, um, I was feeling a little bit out of sorts to begin with because I had a sinus infection and then uh, the light just wasn't the way that I expected it to be. It kind of surprised me by being really harsh. And so I hadn't brought any kind of a diffuser with me and I would have been pretty hard to set something up by myself on the windy day that it was anyways. And so the photos that I took last week were in really harsh light and I wanted them to look much softer because they were these flower photos and so I wanted this nice kind of soft delicate flower look but um, the light just really was not conducive for that. So let me just show you here. This is the original JPEG of the edited photo that you just saw. This is what came straight out of the camera. And the highlights here are relatively well exposed, but we've got very, very dark shadows. And um, this really kind of highlights for us why it's so important that you shoot in RAW if you're in tough lighting conditions or a situation where you want to edit your photos to make sure that you get as much data as possible. And then also that you do try to expose for the highlights because it's much easier to recover data from the shadows generally in your photos. So in this, you know, really kind of high dynamic range situation, if we pull up the raw file, you can immediately see just when I switch to that, 
that um, there's a lot more depth here. It's a lot flatter looking than the JPEG. The contrast already has gone down quite a bit. Um, however, it still is looking a lot um, harsher and darker than I really want it to look. So how can we make this photo look better? Well, I've told you guys before that I really love a photo with a lot of contrast in it. Um, however, I think this is an example of when I actually want less contrast in the photo. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do actually is bring up the exposure a bit because it's pretty dark. Um, I don't wanna lose the highlights here, but they're not looking too bright. And so I'm just gonna bring that up some. And then I'll actually, I think, pull up the shadows more so that I don't start to lose the highlights as well. And so just get it brighter looking. But with that, you can still see it's looking fairly contrasty. And so I'll actually just pull the contrast down. So by bringing the shadows up and bringing the contrast down a little bit, I've really evened out the color tones in this photo. And so just a couple of clicks there um, and it's looking much softer already. Now, when you do that, you start to lose a little bit of the saturation in the photo because um, you know, you've brightened it and taken the contrast out. It starts looking a bit flat, but you can fix that really easily. Just turn up the saturation and the vibrance just like you normally would. So we can bring those back up, something like so. And then even though I want this to have a soft look to it, I do want it also to look sharp, obviously. And so for that, just pull the clarity up some, um, as well as I could go over to the detail tab and pull the detail refinement up some. And I can actually dim the highlights down a little bit just so I can get a little more exposure out of it if I wanted to and bring the contrast down just a little bit more. And there we go. I think that looks pretty much the same as the edit that I did last week. And so that just really softened things up really quickly. Now, the other thing that I did on this, uh, where it was a macro photo, I wanted these flowers really big in the frame, but there was some wind that was blowing everything around. And so the last thing that I did, um, and which I can do now, is just apply a crop to it. Now, I always crop with the original ratio mode up here, just so my photo stays the same shape, uh, which is the four by six that comes out of Nikon cameras and just crop it in. Uh, I'd probably crop it about like that. And that just gets us a lot closer to the flowers, um, makes them a lot bigger in the frame so we can really see the subject there. So that is really all there is to that. If you are in a really harsh light situation, um, it can be tricky to get a good photo without a diffuser. So if you have the option to do that, definitely go for that. However, if you don't have the option to do that, um, I recommend that you expose for the highlights. And especially if you have a newer digital camera and you're shooting in RAW so that you get lots of uh, data there, you should get really good dynamic range from the sensor. It should be able to capture plenty of the data uh, in those shadows and highlights. And so you can just lower your contrast, bring up your exposure as needed, and bring up uh, the shadows and down the highlights as needed to reduce the contrast in the image. Uh, like I said, usually I like high contrast photos, but sometimes I don't especially in harsh light, there can be too much contrast in those JPEGs coming out of the camera. And so this is a good way to reduce that and make the photos look softer even when the light isn't perfect. Um, maybe for a situation like this, that's not necessarily applicable because you know I could have gone back and taken photos of flowers at a different time, but sometimes uh, you know there's a time when you have to take photos maybe 
it's you know this time of year graduation photos under harsh light uh, and if you're not the professional photographer for the graduation you probably didn't bring your <laughs> diffuser out there and so you can just use these kinds of tricks to um, expose for the highlights bring up the shadows reduce the contrast as needed and make things look a little bit better in your post processing afterwards anyway though that is going to be all for this video guys and if you enjoyed it don't forget to hit the like button on your way out and to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more things that i'm really excited to share with you in the future as always thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one mm -hmm.